Devět let trvalo, než cenami ověnčený srbský režisér, hudební scénarista, spisovatel a aktivista Emir Kustorica dokončil svůj zatím poslední film. Příběh o lásce a válce nazval Na mléčné dráze a po boku italské hvězdy Moniky Beluči v něm hraje hlavní mužskou roli. Welcome to DVTV. Hello. On the Milky Road opened in Venice and you said that the Cannes Festival uh, rejected it because of your support for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Does it mean you feel like a persona non grata in European mm -hmm. filmmaking circles? Not really, because this was first, this was not my statement. I never said anything like this. Simply the film was late and the film was not finished. Uh, we finished shooting in March. And how can you expect that one film, but could be in May ready for Cannes, and how it could be presented in April? Because we were hardly matching uh, and achieving Venice, which was four months later. Actually, it was uh, in the newspaper Guardian that was quoting you, uh, saying that the Cannes film festival. Badly, badly. It's not true because I was. It. it was somebody's statement from Russia, who was making this noise. I make. I made a demanti, but whatever okay. you say, demanti. In that case, let me rephrase the question: Does your support for Vladimir Putin influence your popularity among European filmmakers? <laughs> I don't know. Might be yes, might be no, but I don't care because I was not doing a movie neither to be supporter of Putin or to be uh, against him. This is my free reaction to the world in which our country suffered a lot by. Americans and and allies bombing Serbia uh, in in 1999 and doing damage to the country and making cluster bombs, uh, which the uh, the from which the consequence was uh, a lot of cancer in my country and a lot of bad bad things over there. So. So I'll try just one last time. Your support for Vladimir Putin Exists. has had no impact on your no, work no, or all. projections in Europe. This is what I think. Uh, I just repeat once more time. I never stated nothing against Khan and nothing put, uh, that, that could put together both Putin and, and Khan Film Festival. This was a speculation of somebody who wanted to, do, to harm or to damage my film, but I don't think it was the case. This new film of yours has come after a nine-year lasting break. Why is that? Did you have a lack of inspiration or I played or about 500 concerts in between and playing music is much easier and much more amusing than making movies. Making movies is always a difficult, at least how I see cinema, it's not easy at all. It's very, very hard to create the film and to make something that I learned here in Prague in the previous century, which means uh, in my cinema I'm trying to put together artistic and commercial, which is today almost uh, not existing. So that's why making cinema, like you say in, in Czech language, Dzina, <laughs> which is a much better expression than they have in English or French. Was it a Dzina to play with Monica Bellucci, who is no. the main female cast? No. Or is it why you play in the movie in order to be able to play with her? <laughs> this is very, very <laughs> You know why I played this movie? Uh, I played in this movie because there was a short film which is called uh, Conversation with God and it was a part of Omnibus and I took this 15 minutes out of which 12 was in the movie in the end, and I already played a monk. So nobody else could have played but me, certainly. Journalists made it up that I was doing it just to be closer to her. I was not very comfortable playing and directing a feature film. And I stated afterwards that You'll I will never, never do, do it again. again. Because this is really difficult. It's like a getting on transcendency, and at the moment you are transcendental, you have to jump into the story and you have to be both, and this is impossible. And I really worship all these people who, who uh, make both at the same time and who are successful. So there's no other film role that you would consider yourself irreplaceable for? There, I am this absolutely is really irreplaceable. The last one. I'm absolutely replaceable by all means, including. Cannes Film Festival, Venice Film Festival, I'm not replaceable in my life, which is a multipolar activity life, and I don't even uh, cannot just name how many things I do at the same time.
Well, what's sure is that it also implies your commitment in political commenting, which is why my next question is about why, in your opinion, should artists get actually involved in politics? It's such a, very in the way you archetypical. Do. What, what I'm doing is, in fact, what I took from my family. My father was uh, always making political comments, and I just... Uh, uh, like my ancestor was doing it, I'm doing it, and that's probably an in, in, intuitive part of it. But there is another one in which uh, we are losing position. Artist is not what it used to be in 20th century. Politicians took it all because they use media. And in the past, when we were successful, we were not using media, but media was using our thoughts, which are today uh, not that much effective. Look at what happened in the United States. You have entire community of influential artists uh, making statements, making videos, fighting for Obama and in the end, or Clinton and in the end she lost. Which means we are in the new period in which uh, no artist big influence could have on the public opinion. But if you have a, a deep reasons, as I was just telling you, if you are bombed, if you are uh, uh, humiliated, then your reaction is very logical. So what you're describing is that your support for Vladimir Putin is mainly based on your uh, actually problem with uh, the American politics. Does it mean you would be supporting any Russian president and that it's not, nothing personal? There is an expression which... Uh, in, in German, it's called, there's the title of the book, which is called Drang nach Osten. And Drang nach Osten is moving to the east. Because you never had in history that east was conquering the west. And now we are in the same situation. And I'm not just for Vladimir Putin, I'm for the balance in the world, in which not one has the rights to do all what I want to do. And especially, I believe that countries, smaller countries like Syria, Russia, who have energy sources, they have a right to protect it for themselves. So that's a confirmation of what, what, what I was implying, that you would be supporting any Russian president, even if it was not Vladimir Putin. You would be any supporting powerful Russian politics. Enough to be standing in between and to be protecting the uh, the profile of, of, of the eastern countries. Do you still want to put Mr. Putin's rocket in your backyard or on your balcony <laughs> as your wife suggested? I was joking. This, this is very good. That's you, actually you something I, I was not sure about if you're not uh, just provoking or because you lead quite a punk lifestyle. So to, to what extent are I you joke. serious I, in I your really affirmations? Joke. And I couldn't believe that the world is just so serious. I just said I would give him my yard to, to, to make, to make the, the rocket so rocket could make a balance like it used to be. So you uh, wouldn't? Uh, I don't think he would have accepted. M if he would, would you do that? If I would give him my yard? Yeah. For the bomb? No, because the bomb then could be hit by other bomb. It was really a joke. You attended Mr. Putin's third presidential inauguration, that was not a joke, at the Kremlin in 2012. Uh, and, in 2012. Mm -hmm. and that year you also said, if I was English, I would be very much against Putin. If I was American, I would even fight with him. But if I was Russian, I would vote for him. What does it mean, that you only believe in national interests? That I mean, that I, no, no, I, I am very much against globalization, because consequences of globalization are very visible all over the world. The world is most unstable place that ever it was before. I don't think you have it as a, you could share the feeling with me because you live in a quite, uh, quiet, quiet country that is uh, compromising successfully and having a kind of still good life. But the rest of the world is not in good shape. Just one of the reasons is this kind of brutal globalization that is led by some foundations, notably Mr. Soros, who is extending what uh, CIA used to do in Latin America in the 70s, creating fascist regimes and destroying, practically destroying Latin America. What we have today in Balkans and what we have today in Middle East is a brutal interference or attack they do 
against these sovereign states and destroying them. But speaking of sovereign states, uh, it seems to me Russia has now to taken Crimea. So, uh, what Crimea is was, uh, Crimea to be supported? Crimea is a different story. Crimea, you know that major roads and major uh, uh, boulevards in Paris, they have names from Crimea. Name uh, of uh, Boulevard de Sevastopol oui. is uh, coming from the the Three Years' War. Uh, a war they had in uh, the 19th century in between Russia on one side and French and the others. Crimea was, is a Russia. Well, Crimea was actually free from 54 when Russia gave Why it don't you to name, Ukraine. For example, let me ask you another question. Why don't you, for example, bring the issue of Kosovo? Because well, Kosovo I, was I was uh, very happy to speak about Kosovo in a while, but as you said, you said Ukraine, uh, you said Crimea is Russian, but, but Russia Kosovo gave Crimea to Ukraine in 54, and then it actually signed... It was not signed. Russia, it was Khrushchev who did it. That's right, and then in 94 no. it was Russia who confirmed this politics by a memorandum but in that's Budapest. Soviet Union. That's not Russia. I'm not, a, I'm not sure it's Soviet Union in 1994, no, we're speaking about a memorandum that was signed in Budapest in 1994 that actually was guaranteeing territorial integrity to Belarus, Kazakhstan Who and did it? Ukraine. Who did it? Well, it was the Russian president of 1994, so it was not the Soviet Union anymore. But R Crimea was given to Ukraine much earlier during the in Soviet 54. Union. In 1954, yes, and then this was when confirmed. When I was born in 1954, it was given with, uh, uh, with the consequence which was later on, if you want to ask what happened before, and I think there is a much better story to speak about what happens much earlier. Kosovo was cut out of Serbia as a consequence of the of the of the destruction of the of the uh, of the of the of the international law so international law was much more and much much earlier destructed by united states than russia even uh, uh, like a measurement that could apply to this one was made much later during the Yugoslav War, 2.7 million people were forced to flee their homes. Therefore, I would like to ask Ma you... Mainly Serbs. Mainly Serbs. And yeah. therefore, how do you feel about Europe's response to immigration uh, from war-torn countries such as Syria right now? I am absolutely uh, on the side of migrants. I would always uh, exchange uh, 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 the peaceful life for something that migrants bring, because migrants are the new blood. But I'm very much against the conception in which all these migrants are led to Central and Western Europe. And they don't use, for example, Saudi Arabia. And many rich countries like Qatar, like Bahrain, but they want to come. I understand their wish, but I do not understand those who are uh, just creating this ambience. Uh, let's go to the, 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 the what, what is the cause of all of this, if you want. Do you want? Those who started the war in Syria and Iraq, they are making consequence of, of which we suffer in Europe. And we didn't do it. Who started the war in Syria? You know? Well, my question is who started it according to you? My opinions do not interest anyone. Everybody anyone. knows <laughs> who started the war in 1991 and, and Barack Obama, the Nobel Prize winner, uh, uh, was uh, killing, signing 27,000 people to be killed by drones. And he started the war in Syria. And could we not say that Vladimir Putin is now doing the same, bombing Syria? Not really. He was called by Assad to defend sovereign state. But he's bombing civilians in his attacks. Uh, give me a fucking break. <laughs> this is a civil, but what do they do now now in Mosul, Americans? What, what so is Mosul today? Basically, what you're doing, uh, in your opinions, is that you're, you're seeing everything very relatively. You've, you've got like no. this relativizing uh, type of views. I, in like, which I like better and just world. The world of globalization is not just and it's not... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not ju you have. You somebody, just saw the note so of our editor who's speaking about bombing hospitals. So uh, that's but like a bombing. Better. Speaking bombing hospitals, you have Americans who bombed in Afghanistan and who said it's a mistake. Okay, so we will agree on the fact that Vladimir Putin is doing the same as no, Americans. It's not true. Or in w in which way is he better? First of all, uh, Americans are those who design terrorists. They are those, uh, Russia was not designing terrorists, they brought them, they gave them weapons. So it's about who started it? No, it's about principle of destruction of international law, exchanging it for, for the humanitarian law, on behalf of which you could do whatever you want. You could bomb country and bring democracy by bombing, which is not the case. Uh, in the case of Libya, which is much more, I would say, destructive and difficult than any other, you had a, a clear idea how they create the chaos around the world. And this is unjust. And this is what we need to have. That's why I believe we need to have Please go balance. On. Yeah. Well, you understand why Russia and Russian politics are a sensitive issue in the Czech Republic because you actually graduated from the Prague I Film was School FAMO in here. 1978, which was exactly 10 years after the Soviet-led invasion of former uh, Czechoslovakia. And of course, many Czechs are now wary of the Russian meddling in European politics. Do you understand those worries? Yes, I do. But uh, we are not speaking about the same. And this is the major mistake that you do since we started speaking. It's a Russian Federation, it's not Soviet Union. Am I not mistaken by saying that Vladimir Putin was actually a KGB agent during the Soviet but Union? But it doesn't matter. To it doesn't. Well, why would, would, would it matter? You tell it, me if it doesn't matter to you. I don't think it matters because you cannot kill all the people who were active in 60s and 70s. You've said, I was never anti-communist, quite the contrary. Some of my deepest personal convictions were shaped and molded in that system. What does that mean? It means that I don't hate communists. Is it because you don't hate uh, anyone? Tell me something. Or would that is be valid for other... Is this, are you appointed by some international tribunal? Because it, I can it's assure you to we're be, not. It's, it's tough to be uh, pleasant. It gets uh, like you uh, prepared to attack me with your political... Absolutely not. We just have the privilege of having an artist that is politically involved. So I'm uh, yeah, taking advantage so of that you because are, we you don't bomb find... Yeah, but you are bombing me with the, with, the, with the questions which are absolutely not my métier, as, as you know what it means. I'm very much amateur in the, the world of politics. So if I tell you some statements and if you want to play with this as you started, we could even finish this interview earlier. That's up to you. I would be very happy to hear more of your opinions on politics because, as I said, it's quite a, a rare thing to have artists speak this concretely uh, about anything that is that can be called. But uh, you don't seem to be like a person who has as as friendly uh, approach to the teams as as you say, because it's as if I was speaking to somebody who was. Uh, who is coming from State Department, not from the Czech Republic. Well, I'll leave that interpretation to you and let's finish with a, with the last question that shouldn't be seen as too problematic for you, I hope. No, you but speak. You are, you're attacking me for something you don't let me... I am not. I'm actually giving you the room to, to mm -hmm. explain your positions because you didn't have uh, the uh, you're possibility to do that You're speaking about being worried in Czech so Republic far. And Russia was never having, from the Hitler's time, so many soldiers on its borders. Do you know this? I didn't. You didn't. So uh, the, the number of soldiers on the Baltic, in the Baltic states, uh, Romania, and all the uh, 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 Black Sea, you have more soldiers than Hitler was ever having before. So we are now speaking, are we speaking about the uh, Russian soldiers being in Me on the border in on Mexico or being in Caribbean close to the close to the American border? Or no. we are speaking about NATO who is getting closer to, to, to Russia? We are just speaking about you and your sympathies for Vladimir Putin. No, we cannot speak all night about this. This is, this is a question that you, I told you. I like balance and I, I think that the world would be much better if we have a 
uh, two, three uh, uh, powers who are just uh, making compromise like this, we are getting into the chaos. You speak at least five languages. You have a Serbian and French citizenship. You received the highest possible state decorations both in Russia and also in France. Has that ever been confusing or has it just made you insider, an insider both in the East and the West? Why would it be confusing? What is the element of, of confusion? It's just a question. That, that you could have... Uh, I think you are, you are suffering the the lack of, of progress because you're speaking about Russia like as if it was as it, if it was the same story like in 60s it's not the case Russia is a new uh, 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 country that was Emir Kusturica for DVTV thank you very much You're welcome